Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first MVP Days Microsoft Flow Conference Online. My name is Fausto Kaplan Jr. And today I will be presenting the session Express Yourself, Building Expressions with Microsoft Flow. Before I dig into the session, let me just get the boring stuff out of the way, which is some information about me. I have been in the SharePoint world for about eight to nine years now. I started as a SharePoint administrator by accident. Um, my main focus has been deploying farms, configuring all the servers, deploying um, everything that's related to SharePoint, such as, such as building team sites, creating workflows, doing some monitoring, making sure that you know the farm is running smooth. Um, in addition to being a SharePoint administrator, I'm also a, a SharePoint citizen developer. I have spent about four years now just doing some client side development, you know, using JavaScript and jQuery, just to pretty much, you know, just to do some enhancements to form, you know, to list forms or to certain pages, you know, based on customer requirements. Um, in addition to that, I'm a I'm an active Flow community member. Um, during my downtime, when I'm not doing anything, I normally hang around the forums, you know, see what people are working on, um, if they have any questions or they're having any issues, anything that I can help. I normally try to jump in as, as often as I can. And in addition to that, I am also a blogger. Most of the stuff that you can find in my blog site, it's all related to Microsoft Flow. So you can see I love the platform a lot. What's in the agenda today? Um, I'm going to go over an expressions overview. I'm also going to discuss how expressions work, the types of expressions that you can build with the Microsoft Flow, where these expressions can be used, the data types that Microsoft Flow can handle, some of the expression functions, certain limitations to keep in mind when building flows, some tips and best practices to make your life easier down the road, and a couple of demos so you can see how expressions are built. Expressions overview. I consider expressions to be a set of functions that can be used for many different things. Some of these things are manipulate strings, convert data types, perform logical functions, retrieve and manipulate date and time, and perform math functions, among others. One thing to keep in mind once you start digging around, you know, Microsoft Flow and building expressions and everything, Microsoft Flow leverages the Azure Logic Apps workflow definition language. So it's ideal that you can keep that you keep that page bookmark so you can go back and reference it, you know, and see all the functions that they have listed there, which is, you know, they're the same functions that that are used within Microsoft Flow and also some examples, you know, that can get you started. How expressions work. Expressions are executed the same way as math operations. They're executed from the inside out. So, for example, here we have the add days function. This function has three parameters. First parameter is the timestamp that you want to either add or subtract days from, the number of days that you want to add or subtract, and the output format that you want to see your date once the function is completed. So, for example, here we have the function. We have the add this function and my first parameter, you can see I have kind of like a complex or an advanced expression, as I would call it. So in the first parameter, I want to get the current date and time, which is a UTC now that will give you, as I mentioned, um, it will give you the current date and time in UTC format, meaning that whenever you work with UTC, you just have to kind of like compensate to, you know, to your time zone. But from the UTC now, uh, which is right now my my date, it's November 21st. I actually want to get the first day of the month. So to get the first of the month, I'm actually using the function startup month. That will give me the first, the very first day of November. But then instead of adding, I want to subtract one day. So if you want to add a day using the add days function, you have to use a positive number, but if you want to subtract, you have to use a negative number. So in my case, I want to subtract one day from the first day of the month. And once the operation is completed, I want my day to be formatted as the two digit month, two digit day and four digit year. 
you're gonna see this this um this expression in in a, in a in a demo that I'll be that I'll be doing um later on. So just stay tuned for that one. Types of expressions. I consider the expressions to be basic and advanced. Basic expressions contain one function with one or more parameters. So for example, in this in this sample, in this example, you can use that I'm using the concatenate the, the concatenate function. And what am I doing with that? I am doing I have two parameters there. My first parameter is the to uh, the string today is. Normally when you have when you work with strings, you have to wrap it, you have to wrap it around single quotes. And my second parameter is the UTC now, which is gonna give me the current date and time um, from now. But from the example, you're gonna see that I run this before. So it get the output gave me today is 2018, November 3rd, 1 15 p.m. in military time. Advanced expressions contain more than one function with one or more, more parameters. So for example, here's a, the expression that I showed in the previous slide in the two slides before. So which is that I'm using the add days uh, function to retrieve the first day of the month. Once I retrieve the first day of the month, then I want to subtract one from that to give me the last day of previous month. And then I want I want the expression to format the day as two digit month, two digit day, and four digit year. So the output it's going to be October 31st, 2018. Where expressions can be used. Expressions can be used within actions. In this example, as you can see, I'm kind of like a big fan of the add this um, function. I am adding three days to the time from from another action that I have run that I have running the action is it's called convert UTC to CST and I want the output to be formatted as four digit year two digit month and two digit day expressions can also be used within conditions um, one thing to keep in mind when you're building an expression in a condition is first you don't have intelligence like you have it when you do it directly in an action on you know because when you do it through an action you microsoft flow gives you the option that you can build expression on the expressions tab so it kind of like gives you as to start typing the the function that you want it to give you some some suggestions for you to pick within that conditions you cannot do that it won't give you that it won't give you that so you have to pretty much type it in manually and one thing to keep in mind also when you build an expression in that condition the expression has to start with the add sign. Data types. Some of the data type, not some of the data types, like all the data types that Microsoft Flow can, can handle are strings, which is which represent alphanumeric data such as letters, numbers, spaces, symbols, punctuate and punctuation marks. Another data type is integer. These are whole numbers without a decimal. They can be either positive, negative, or zero. It also handles float numbers, which are decimal numbers. It also handles boolean, boolean, which represent two values. It only represents either true or false. All the data types that Microsoft Flow can handle are arrays. Arrays represent a collection of elements, each selected by one or more indices, which are the identifying keys that can be computed at runtime during the execution of a program. It also it can also handle dictionaries, which dictionaries are represent a collection of key and value and provides a mapping of the set of keys with their values. Every key in the dictionary must be unique and cannot be null. And another data type that Microsoft Flow can handle are its forms. Forms contain elements called controls, such as text box, drop downs, radio buttons and each control manages a specific data type these controls are used to display information to the user or receive information from the user expression functions microsoft flow contains a set of functions that they you know they could be used for different things so for example it contains a set of 
it contains a set of string functions, which can be used to manipulate strings, such as concatenate strings, replace a string within a string, or convert a string to either upper or lower case. Now, the set of functions that you can find within Microsoft Flow are collection functions. These functions operate over collections and generally apply to arrays, strings, and sometimes dictionary, dictionaries. Another set of functions are logical functions. These can be used to evaluate any type of logic within flows, such as if equals less than, greater than. In addition to the functions that I mentioned before, it also contain it also has conversion functions. These functions can be used to convert data type between each of the native types, such as string, integer, float, boolean, arrays, dictionaries, and forms. It also contains math functions that can be used to do calculations for either type of numbers for integers or floats. You can perform you know, addition, division, multiplication, or subtraction. It also contains data, date and time functions, which can be used to retrieve and format date and time, convert time zones, add days, and get future and past times. It also contains referencing functions that can be used to reference the output from triggers and actions, meaning any data that you can retrieve from a trigger or from or from an action, for example, you're working with a SharePoint get items. Um, it pretty much can reference any any data that that is returned during that action. Additionally, it contains it contains workflow functions. These functions are pretty much used just to get information about the workflow itself, a runtime, such as the workflow name, the type, the ID, the location, and the run. Um, it also contains URI parsing functions. These functions provide the, avail the ability to parse URLs. For example, from a given URL, you can select the host, you can select the host name, path, port, scheme, and query segments. And finally, it also it contains manipul manipulation functions. These functions apply to XML and JSON objects. Some are used to return the first known null object pass in an argument, while others are used to add, set, or remove properties from an object. Limitations. Microsoft Flow, as pretty much any other technology, it had it has certain limitations. Um, to me, they're not considered a big deal, but you know it's something that I should mention out there just in the event you might run into this later down the road. For example, one of the limitations that you can run into is expression evaluation limit. When you're building an expression, flow expressions can only evaluate up to 131,072 characters. I have yet to see something that big, but you never know. But that's something to keep in mind. And in addition to the expression but evaluation limit, Microsoft Flow also has a maximum number of characters per expression. For example, flows allow allows a maximum of 8,992 characters per expression. Some tips and best practices that you know I normally suggest to people. Um, there, you know, there's a few, but I know there's a lot of stuff out there that you can um, pretty much corroborate with the community or check with the community. One thing that, that I always point out is that Microsoft Flow reads and processes date and time in coordinated universal time in UTC. So for example, let's say that you're retrieving an item from a SharePoint list and you know you wanna get information about the created or the modified date. When you look at it on, on your tenant, you can see it on your current time zone because that's how it's configured. But when Flow, when Flow runs, and reads that date and time is actually gonna translate that to UTC now. So it's always good to keep that in mind. So in the event you need to, you know, get like the correct date and time from you know anything, you know, a file, SharePoint item or or anything that you can that you can access through um, Office 365, you have to compensate to your time zone. You have to do your conversion down so you don't have any 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 issues. 
Another best practice that I suggest is whenever you you add a function, you add an action to to a flow. Always rename the actions with with the meaningful names. Um, this would be pretty much a lifesaver down the road. You know, if you build a flow and you don't access it for like three six months. Once you go back into it, you can see, you know, you can read the functions and everything. You can pretty much tell what functions does what. And in addition to renaming the actions with meaningful names, I also suggest to add comments to the actions speci specifically or especially if they contain some expressions. Like I said, like a, like I previously mentioned, this would be pretty much just to make your life easier, you know, make the life easier for you or anybody else that has to work with this micro, with this flows down the road. All right, let's look at a couple of demos. I'm gonna build a basic and an advanced demo where you can see how basic expressions are built and how advanced expressions can be built. And if time permits, I'm also gonna try to build a full-fledged solution that I built in the past for uh, a user in one of the forums. All right, let's get to it. All right, so let's build our demo flow. Uh, pretty much what I'm gonna be building right now, it's just, just something from, from blank. I, you know, there's a lot of templates that you can use out there, but I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, just starting from scratch, pretty much I can experience everything, you know, like all the connections and actions that are available within flow. So. For this example, since this is just going to be something very simple, um, I'm going to get the, the the flow started with with the flow button. So we're just going to trigger this um, flow manually. Um, and before I go any you know any further, I'm going to assign a name to the flow. So let's call these MVP days MS. Conference done. Okay, so we already have our manual trigger here, and the next action that I'm gonna that I'm going to add, and it's one of my favorite, the whole wild world, it's the compose action. And this is one of the things that I one of the things that I mentioned before. All this, if you keep, for example, like if you work with a lot of compose actions in it, what flow is gonna do? It's gonna give you compose, and then when you add the next one, it's gonna give you compose two, compose three, compose four, and then if you wanna get data from it, you know, from from one of the the, the compose actions, you're gonna be confused because you're not gonna know exactly what compose two, three, and four do. That's why I normally recommend to have this, um, all the actions pretty much just renamed to something meaningful. So I'm gonna call this one basic expression concatenate. All right. So in order to get into the um, the flows tab, what you can do is you can click on the field here, and Microsoft Flow it's nice enough that it will give you any dynamic content that I might be might, that might be available from you know from either the trigger from a previous action. So for example, like right now we see that there's certain information that we can that we can pretty much use from the manual trigger. But since we don't need that, I'm actually going to go into the expressions tab. And one thing that you can do, you can actually go through the functions here, or you can start typing the, um, the function that you want for your expression. So in my case, I want to do the concatenate. So you're going to see that it gives you, based on the three letters that I type, it gives you like a whole bunch of different options that, you know, suggestions that you can select. But for my case, I'm going to select the concat. And what I'm going to do, you can see here that it gives you you know, it gives you some idea as to what your parameter is going to be. So it's actually looking for a string. Um, what I'm going to do is the same one that I showed before in one of my slides. So I'm going to say 
today is I'm gonna give it a space and when you working with a function that has either one or more parameters you can actually to go to the next parameter you have to add comma and then you're gonna see that the flow is gonna give you a suggestion as to you know what the next parameter is so in the case of the concatenate expression is it's all string so it's going to give you text one two three and so on and so forth so what i want to use is i want to use the utc now function um which is in its itself um what i'll consider a basic expression so once i have that selected i'm going to click ok i'm actually going to copy this to ok and I'm going to add the expression as a comment here. So if someone else wants to come and read um, this flow, you know, they can actually see what expressions is in there so they don't, without having to click on this and then go in here. All right. So my next action, again, is going to be my favorite compose. Um, this one I'm going to use to retrieve the first day of the month. So this is also going to be a basic expression. First day of month, right? So again, click on the inputs, go into the um, expression tab, and I'm going to start building my expression for that. So since I want to get the first day of the current month, I want to use the start of month function. And you can see that it's pointing out in which parameter I'm in right now. So my parameter is going to be for the times uh, for the timestamp is going to be the UTC now. And for the format, I'm going to use the two digit month, two digit day, and four digit year. One more way. And I'm gonna copy, click OK, and add the, the expression as a comment. So um, anyone can see what's in in here. And for my last one, another compose. And for this one, I want to get the last day of the previous month. So let's call this. And by the way, this one is going to be an advanced uh, expression, meaning that I'm having one function and then this function is going to have a couple of the functions, like nested functions, as a parameter to the main, um, to the main function. So let's call this advanced expression. Okay, let's stay previous month. All right. So let's build our expression here. I'm going to do the add days for my first. For my first parameter, I um, need to add the start of month function. This is um, the same one that I showed in the slide before. So once I add this function as, as a parameter here, then I also want to add another function, which is going to be my time string, my, my timestamp, the UTC now function. So you can see as I move, Right now, the stuff that it's highlighted right now, you can see this is the first parameter of the add days um, function. And once I move in here, you're gonna see, you can see that um, that UTC now is my first parameter for the start of month function. All right, so since that's the only thing that I need from that, I'm going to add a comma so I can move to my next parameter for the add days function. So I'm going to add a minus one. And one thing to keep in mind, whenever you're working with strings in flow, strings has to be wrapped 
in single quotes. Um, I think I mentioned that before. Now, if you add a number and you wrap it around single quotes, Microsoft Flow is going to read it as a string. It's not going to read it as a number. So when you want to work with numbers, you just have to add the number um, as it is, no wrapped around in single or double quotes. All right, so that's my second parameter. And my third parameter is going to be the format that I want, which is going to be, again, my two-digit month, two-digit day, and four-digit year. All right, so I'm going to copy. Add this as a comment. And boom. All right, so I'm going to save. It's saving so now um, one thing that I'm going to do you can test the flow directly from here or you can just go back out and run it from directly from from um, from the screen but you know we're ready here so let's just test it I'm gonna select I'll perform the trigger the trigger action so I'm going to select that and then I'm going to click on test. It's going to say run flow. Um, it's going to tell you since it is a minor trigger, it says this flow doesn't need additional input to run. So just click on run flow. It's going to take a couple of seconds. It's going to say your flow run successfully started. Click on done. And you can see that my flow ran successfully. It's right over here. So let's see, minor trigger is not going to have anything underneath, right? Because we don't have any inputs in there. But for the uh, concatenate expression, you can see that we concatenated today is uh, with the current date and time coming from the UTC now, which is um, gives you the year 2018, the month 11, no point November, um, November 21st um, is the day, and then the time is um 707 and 8 seconds in the morning so right now i'm in eastern standard time and my current time is 208 in the morning so you can see the stuff that i mentioned before about how microsoft flow works with date and time in utc not in, in utc format not on the current time zone that you're in all right so all this keep that in mind all right so the output for my basic expression first day of month you can see that the current day is november 21st and he actually gave me november 1st 2018 and to get the last day of the previous month easy that's going to be october 31st 2018 all right so without pretty much um wrapping this presentation um before we wrap it up you know let, let me let's go over a summary of some of the subjects that you know that i discuss um during this session first we went over an expressions overview kind of like you know gave you an idea of what expressions are um we also went over how expressions work um the types of expressions that can be built with a microsoft flow where these expressions can be used such as in actions or conditions the data types that microsoft flow can handle some of the all the functions that that you can use for to build expressions some of the limitations that we have to keep in mind when working with microsoft flow a couple of tips and best practices you know to make your life easier when you know as you build flows or you have to um, you know you have to manage them and also um demo on how you can build basic and advanced expressions this is all my information if you want to reach out to me you can you can email me my email address is listed there you can also follow me in twitter you can also if you want to connect to linkedin my information is there you can you can go to my link and pull up my profile and just send me a connect i'll be more than happy um, to connect and you know work on you know building solutions or you know answering any questions that you may have 
and you can also see the link to my website there and with this i want to say thank you for um attending my session again my name is Fausto kaplan jr thank you thank you thank you so much for attending and have an awesome rest of the day